business environment as we know it has changed considerably in the weeks leading up to me recording this video. And companies are going through unprecedented change as we speak. So there are a number of things that companies need to be doing differently as we look to the path forward and how to navigate these changes in these challenging times. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent and technology agnostic consulting firm that helps clients through their transformations. And just a few weeks ago, the world looked very different than it looks today. Companies were growing. They're thinking opportunistically about how to capitalize on growth. They're looking to international markets for growth and things overall looked pretty good from an economic and, and certainly a health perspective. But a lot of that has changed overnight and now we're rethinking how we run our businesses and what we need to do as the dust settles and we recover from the economic and health crisis that we're, we're facing here today. And so what I want to cover today are the top 10 things and the top 10 keys for your organization as you navigate some of these challenges. So in other words, these are the top 10 things that you should be doing to help navigate this business and transformational recovery that we're all going through. So number 10 on our list is fast decision making. And this is probably the one we're most sensitive to right now as, as I'm filming this video. A lot of organizations are in crisis management mode, trying to figure out how to manage the fallout, navigate the challenges that are happening right in front of them. And it's a lot like being at war in some ways. You've got grenades going off around you and you're trying to figure out how to, how to navigate and how to survive. And this is going to be a constant value or a constant need for organizations going forward is ensuring that they have the ability to make decisions quickly and decisively, and also that they're able to take action quickly to mitigate whatever challenges they may be facing. For some organizations, it's a little bit more opportunistic. Their supply chains are strained or they're redlining in their production and their manufacturing environments, as many of our clients are in the food and beverage industry and the consumer staple uh, industry, grocers are facing the same challenges. So for some organizations, those challenges and the quick decision making are related to how do we address the increase in demand and the sudden surges and disruptions to our business. For other organizations, it's how do we downsize? How do we navigate the drop in demand? How do we navigate the uncertainty of the future? So whatever side of the equation you may be on, it's important to have fast decision making as one of your core tenets and the core competencies as you move forward. Number nine on our list is reassessing your infrastructure. And this is something that a lot of organizations probably aren't thinking about yet, at least not at the time I'm recording this video. But one of the risks and the challenges of having a, a remote workforce and suddenly having mobile employees, and I'm not sure how long that will last, where more employees are, are working remotely, either expectedly or unexpectedly. But what this does is it creates a new level of strain on your current technology infrastructure. So it's important to look at how are we deploying technology today, how secure is our technology, how secure is our data, and make sure that we're not vulnerable to, to attacks and cybersecurity issues. One of the big risks with where we are today as a society and as an environment is we're so focused on an immediate problem that's right in front of us that we may be exposing ourselves to longer term risks and in particular cyber attacks and cybersecurity issues. And uh, one of our internal experts at, at Third Stage has identified some studies that have shown that attempted cyber attacks are at an all-time high on American companies. I'm not sure if that's true for other countries as well, but in general, that's a common problem that organizations should be aware of. So really looking at our infrastructure, making sure we tighten it up, and that we also are creating a flexible infrastructure that allows for mobile workforce and other potential disruptions like this in the future are going to be very critical. So number eight on our list is to deploy and leverage technology very selectively. In the past, organizations may have had more of a luxury to do big, massive ERP projects or HCM deployments. But now in the current state of environment, we really need to look at more about strategic value and looking at what types of technologies deliver value to us and help us mitigate risk and help us address the realities of today. So for example, in the past, we've seen a lot of companies that were getting a little bit reckless and careless with the way they were spending money on their enterprise technologies. And in the near future, I, I suspect that this is probably a, a problem of the past and something that companies are gonna start to tighten up on, which could be a silver lining from the environment we're in right now. 
in that companies are going to be smarter about how they deploy technologies. So it's really important to look at where are your significant pain points and how can you selectively leverage technology and not get caught up in the old paradigm of over committing and buying too much technology, uh, buying too much shelfware, investing in new technologies that are immature or aren't fully baked yet. Those days are probably over for a while. And so one of the names of the game going forward for organizations looking to navigate this recovery is to figure out how can we leverage technology selectively to help us manage human capital better or manage our supply chains better or to help drive top line revenue growth. Those are some of the things that companies are thinking more about today than they might have been in the past. So leveraging technology selectively falls at number eight on our list. So number seven on our list is taking ownership of your transformation project, your transformation initiatives, business process improvement initiatives, whatever types of transformations you might be going through and you might continue to do going forward, it's important for organizations to take more ownership of that. Partly because of economic reasons, because some companies just simply can't afford to outsource or to pay higher costs for outside people to manage their transformations. But also because it's important to have that internal competency going forward, especially as things are changing and we need to have flexible environments and flexible operations, flexible human capital and workforces, all those things are going to be valued a lot more and they're going to be more of a premium and, a, and a, an important commodity going forward. So having that ownership internally is extremely important. And along those same lines, learning and in, in talent management and development is going to be another important capability because as organizations change and as we need to change our paradigms and our business models, the people are going to have to learn and, and move differently as well. And I'll get more to that topic later in the top 10 list as well. But in general, having that ownership and learning capability is an important part of the recovery process. Number six on our list is business process management. For most organizations right now, business processes are being disrupted as a result of what's happening in the world around us with, with the health and economic situation. And whether it's because supply chains are becoming strained or because we are dealing with mobile workforces or people working at home, or whether it's because we're dealing with drops in demand or changing consumer sentiment or end customer demand and needs, we're having to retool our business processes as we speak so really looking at our, our overall processes, our overall business model, and ensuring that we are selectively optimizing where necessary is going to be very important going forward. I mentioned earlier in the list how technology can also enable business process improvements. So it may be that there are select technologies that might help you improve your business processes. But one of the most important things you can do right now is take an inventory of your current business processes and identify where the pain points are and the opportunities are to show immediate relief, but also capitalize on potential longer term opportunity as the dust settles and as we as organizations start to recover from the current situation. Number five on our list is flexibility. If there's one thing we've learned in 2020, it's that there's a lot of things we can't predict. Black swan events and other things that none of us had ever predicted and would have ever expected to happen in 2020. And it's exposed in many ways organizations challenges with dealing with major changes, major challenges, whether it's spikes in demand or strained supply chains or whether it's uh, drops in demand or end customers changing their, their buying behavior, whatever it may be, having flexibility and really valuing that as a core competency is going to be extremely critical in the coming months and years as we move forward. Number four on our list is risk mitigation. Risk management is going to be one of the most important factors for organizations as they navigate the future, particularly as it relates to transformations. As they're going through transformations, trying to figure out how are they going to change their businesses, their people, their processes, their technology to deal with all the changes they're facing, that flexibility is going to be very important. And in the past, the focus for a lot of organizations was more on scale and standardization and common business processes. But what I think you'll see today is that pendulum is going to swing a little bit more toward flexibility. You're going to see a lot more organizations that realize that they can't respond quick enough or they had a lot of trouble responding quick enough to what's happened in 2020. So really building that flexibility and that capability within the organization will be an important part of the transformation process and the recovery process for organizations going forward. 
So at the time I'm filming this video, a lot of people are still in a reactive mode. They're still reacting to the reality of what's happening today. They're in crisis management mode. They're trying to triage. They're trying to figure out what to do if an employee gets sick or if the economy bottoms out, what, what are we going to do to manage all this? And it can be easy to lose sight of the big picture when we're in short-term survival mode. And so having an effective strategy and an effective long-term roadmap is something that's extremely critical. And it's important to leverage outside help and, and mind space to really focus some of your time on developing a strategy that makes sense for your organization. Because let's face it, most organizations are going to go through some sort of transformation in the next coming months or years, whether they like it or not, or whether they plan to or not, they're going to have to to survive. So there are some organizations that are naturally going to be a little bit more opportunistic in their future transformations, but others are going to have to transform because they have to, and they're reacting to something. So the more we can get ahead of that and have a clear strategy and roadmap, even though we can't predict the future, at least having a clear vision for what it is we want to accomplish and how we're going to build the competencies that we need to survive in the future. Those are some things that are really important for us to manage and navigate some of these changes we're going through as a globe right now. So the number two competency and key to success in this new environment you're in right now is human capital management. And that's something that was already emerging as an important thing over the last few years. But the value and importance of human capital management is just going to skyrocket from here. And the reason for that is really twofold. There's two pieces of that. One is when you look at the short term consequences of any sort of health crisis or economic crisis, you have people that, that need something. They, they are having trouble at a, on a personal level, perhaps, or their lives are being disrupted in some way, whether it's because they have to work from home or their kids aren't in school or they have a, a sick family member or maybe they're worried about their jobs. There's just so much for employees to think about that HR as a department is going to be strained and they're, they're gonna become even more important to organizations going forward, as will that entire human capital management capability. And I'm not talking specifically just technology when I talk about HCM, I'm talking about more of a capability in general that might or might not include technology. So the ability to help manage employees in these uncertain times is one layer of human capital management. The other layer of human capital management is a little bit longer term thinking in terms of continuity and succession planning. So how do we build a workforce that can be nimble, that can respond to changing times, that can respond to black swan events or the health and economic crisis were to continue longer term? How do we ensure that we've built our human capital management capabilities accordingly? that longer term or strategic aspect of human capital management will become even more important. So for those reasons, human capital management is number two on our top 10 list of what you'll need to do differently going forward. So if you've watched any of my videos over the years, you know I love change management. I started off as a change management practitioner. If I have one bias, it's that I lean pretty heavily into change management. Times like today are no different. In fact, I lean even more into change management in times like these and looking at what organizations need and what competencies are going to help them through the current situation and help them be better at what they do and really help them move from a position of defense and reactive survival mode and more into strategic mode of how can we navigate and weather the storm and look for opportunities to grow and to benefit from the situation that we're in right now. So organizational change management is hugely critical, largely because of what was number two on our list, the human capital management aspect. People's lives are changing, people are gonna change, whether organizations like it or not, they're gonna be forced into some sort of digital or business transformation or both going forward. So that change management piece of things, given what the world is going through and what we're all going through on a personal level, as well as a business and professional level, is gonna be extremely important and more important than ever. So those reasons alone are enough to put organizational change management at number one on our top 10 list. So obviously the world looks a lot different today than it did in 2019 or even early 2020. And the things we need to do differently and the things we value as organizations, as businesses, and as teams are a lot different today. In some ways they're similar, but they're, they're different. They're weighted differently. There's different things that are more important now than they were in the past. And so these top 10 things were meant to provide you some things to think about as you try to figure out how do we navigate our organization uh, into the new reality in the new future. And one of the things we're doing for our clients at the moment is helping assess their current situation and helping them identify what that roadmap is. What is that recovery roadmap? 
how do we make the most of our human capital management and plan for continuity and, and look at our business processes to improve our potential business processes to deal with these new realities. All that stuff can be overwhelming, especially when we might not have been planning to go through this sort of change or transformation. So one thing that we can help with is, is that sort of discussion. So I encourage you to please feel free to reach out if you'd like to brainstorm ideas on how you might navigate these new realities. I've included my contact information below. I'd be happy to set up a Zoom or a web conference meeting with you to chat through and brainstorm some of these ideas. I also encourage you to please check out the links below. I've included some other links that might be helpful to you as you navigate your new reality. And I also encourage you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Hope you have a great day and hope you're staying well and take care.